Good morning guys, today we're going to do a little walk through the Kerm Botanical Gardens in Oman and I'm going to just point out a few interesting plants and trees that I find along the way or anything else that's uh, of particular interest. First off, so first off um, I'm going to point out this little creeper here. It's Pentatropus nivalis. It's actually an indigenous creeper and it's found basically growing over plants um, like acacia trees and uh, various other plants. This one's growing mostly over a fence. Um, you can see the tiny flowers right here. And I believe it's from the Asclepiid family, uh, which is the milkweed family, the same family where um, monarch butterflies get their food as larval um, insects. Um, and right next to it, if I go close to the fence here, you have what's called uh, Calotropus procera. Um, it's not the best view from here, but it's a highly toxic plant. It's got a milky latex. Milky latex is always very, very bad. Indicates that the plant is toxic, except in the fig family, where uh, figs are edible and they have a multi milky latex. Um, and you can see some of the Pentatropus nivalis growing here, also uh, on, on the Calotropus procera. Calotropus procera is called Sodom's apple and is found in a lot of desert areas, particularly the Sahel, um, which is the sort of band between the Sahara Desert and the rest of Africa, and also in the Middle East. Right, so I'm looking kind of into a fenced off area where they are cultivating bougainvilleas, which are the flowers, the colorful flowers that you see there. Bougainvilleas are from the family Nyctaginaceae, and they have thorns, and they have these really papery sort of um, extensions. I think they call them, they might be part of the calyx um, of the plant, but they're these large papery like leaves that make the, the colorful, that appear like colorful blossoms. Um, in the background there is a banyan tree. It's a fig species with a very, very characteristic drooping tip, which is typical of tropical plants where there's a lot of rainfall to direct the water off the, the leaf. Um, and then just also in the background here, the branches of the tree up here that looks kind of grassy. Uh, this is a Moringa. Uh, it has pods which are edible and I believe this is Moringa peregrina which is indigenous to this area. You'll find it in the deserts and um, yeah, also an interesting plant. There are plants of this genus that occur in southern Africa that are called phantom trees. Um, Moringa or Valleyfolia. But anyway, very interesting trees. Right, over here we have a neem tree and um, right next to it is this prosopis tree. Uh, prosopis cineraria is the name of this tree. It's a very upright tree and is indigenous to Oman. Uh, the neem tree right next to it, which is Azadiracta indica. And um, the neem tree, of course, has a lot of uses, including making toothpaste and as various other medicinal purposes. Um, the prosopis, also known sometimes as a mesquite, is useful in making firewood and charcoal. So two very interesting trees. So here we can see a close-up of the leaves of the um, neem tree, very famous in India. Here we have a grove of banana trees. Um, the banana trees basically grow vegetatively in other words they do not have any seeds if you open a banana it has no seeds uh, scientists don't know the exact origin of banana trees and they don't know how it came to be that they survived only by vegetative um, propagation uh, but you can see a, a bunch of bananas there that are still unripe um, and typically when people plant banana trees they're going to plant them in areas that are well watered um, you can see there's kind of like a furrow down here and so a lot of water collects here and then you, you see the, the sort of old leaves of the banana trees that have been left there that helps provide carbon in the soil and, and also acts as a mulch so really cool uh, banana trees Yeah, we have a pomegranate bush uh, you can see the pomegranate developing there uh, very popular in this part of the world and um, provides a very very nice healthy fruit and you can also make it into a very nice drink. So here we have a whole grove of 
various kinds of trees and bushes. We've got banana trees with the large, long uh, palm uh, fronds, and we have in, in the foreground here these sort of palmate leaves of a castor oil plant, which is where we get castor oil, which is used for treating stomach ailments. It is also very, very toxic, though, if, if you use the wrong part of the plant and you don't treat it properly, because um, it contains ricin, which is one of the most toxic uh, substances. Um, the tree at the back, the big palm tree, is a date palm, um, Phoenix dactylifera, uh, which is, uh, of course, the, the famous palm that produces all the date fruits. There's also a little um, neem tree that's growing beneath it. There's a fig on the right hand side uh, which is a banyan fig. In the foreground we've got what I believe to be Suede vermiculata. It's one of the indigenous plants that occurs in Oman. And then lower down here uh, this looks like a needle bush um, you know, with the sp spines but I'm not certain of this particular species. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, anyway, very interesting. Right, so I'm standing here in the botanical gardens and behind me you can see a lot of date palms and you can also see what seem to be sort of traditional structures. This is a mock-up of a traditional village in Oman and it was supposed to be a marketplace. Uh, it's kind of fallen into disrepair right now, unfortunately. But yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. So there's a mock-up of a fort just ahead of us with all the date palms and then I'll scan across here and you can see some of these other sort of traditional homes that have been built uh, just as a mock-up of what traditional Omani homes look like. So right here in front of me is a relative of the banana tree. It's called the Traveller's Tree. Ravenola madagascariensis, as the name suggests, from Madagascar. You can see that the base of the leaves form a kind of fan, and that's very, very characteristic. And it's called a traveler's tree because water collects at the base of the leaves where you see it forming the fan, and obviously it makes for a place for people to get water when they're parched. Okay, yeah, we have a more in impressive uh, specimen of the traveler's tree. You can see the, the very nice fan-like structure. The fronds are very long. These are probably approaching five meters. The largest leaves in the plant kingdom are in fact um, the raffia palm leaf, which can get up to 20, 15, 20 meters long. Uh, so it's very impressive. Uh, those come from Southern Africa. And um, yeah, so unfortunately not gonna be available in this video. So we have a uh, white-cheeked bulbul bird in the, in the tree uh, just above us and this is actually a, Af an African flame tree. It has big large red flowers or blossoms which are not available at the moment. Here we have a frangipani which has very fragrant flowers. Um, I have featured this plant before in one of my previous videos um, but it's a very very nice tropical plant typically planted in this area and other tropical countries um, very nice garden plant here we have a banyan fig you can see the very characteristic leaves of the banyan fig um, Buddha is uh, supposedly spent a lot of time meditating under such a tree here's a better view of the Calotropus procera or Sodom's apple that I mentioned earlier in the video this is highly toxic um, has the white milky latex um, and it produces fruits with a pod basically with uh, seeds that have a feathery attachment or pappus which helps them with uh, being dis dispersed. Okay we have a different fig tree species here I'm not certain of the species the specific species but it is a ficus species I'm gonna approach the tree and we'll have a look at the fruits so as I approach in towards the base of the tree here um, you can see the clusters of figs uh, sort of growing here. Uh, figs have, a lot of fig species have what is called cauliflory which is the uh, flowers and the fruits uh, grow directly from the main stem 
instead of from branches. So you can see that happening here. Um, so it's, it's not like the typical way a, a, a tree would flower. These individual fruits start off as what are called cyconia, uh, which are basically compound uh, inflorescences or flowers that are fertilized by a wasp species. And then when they become fertilized, they develop just as they are into the fig fruit. So, so it always kind of looks like this. This is a, what a cyconia would look like. And eventually it produces a fruiting body and you have a fig fruit. Each fig species has a specific um, wasp species that pollinates it. So a little earlier I spoke about the African flame tree, Spathodia campanulata, typically found planted in a lot of tropical countries. Uh, this is actually a false flamboyant, Delanix regia, which is also found in a lot of uh, tropical countries and um, also has kind of the reddish flowers, different shape though of the petals compared to the African flame tree, but nonetheless a very, very interesting tree. It's from the Cecil Pineaceae, uh, which is the flamboyant family. Very, very pretty tree. Yeah, on this tree we have a graceful prinia. You can hear it calling. It's right at the tip. What a beautiful bird. There he is, a little graceful prinia. Here we have mother-in-law's tongue, Sanseviera. There are a number of species and um, worldwide and it's an interesting plant. It is adapted to dry conditions. It has an underground uh, rhizome which can be used to get some moisture in, in times of extreme drought and, th and thirst but I've tried digging them out. It's more effort than it's worth um, and it doesn't taste that great let me tell you. Uh, but it does make a very nice fiber. If you want to make cordage, um, this is one of the better plants to use. Here we have Sporobolus grass. It's one of the species of Sporobolus. Um, they sometimes call them drop seed grasses. Apparently these are an aphrodisiac for rodent species, believe it or not. Um, I'll try to look up the, the specific species name. So drop seed, Sporobolus. This is the back end of the um, Kerm Bota Botanical Gardens and it's also the back end of the Kerm mangroves. You can see these sort of dark green trees on the bank. Those are Prosopis juliflora which is an introduced species and is actually quite a problem in a lot of the wadis. Um, there's some Phragmites reeds growing on the bank here. We also have on the left hand bank um, some tamarisk trees, Tamarix aphyla which are very very salt tolerant trees actually and you, and you tend to find them right on the edge of sort of the upper water level of most wadis so you know the wadis dry out during the the dry season during the hottest period which would be summer and um, typically you'll find a line of these trees marking essentially the high water mark after the, the heavy summer rains so yeah that's uh, Tamarix aphyla. I have found that these trees are also an indication of the presence of um, Indian crested porcupine in the wadis and I've seen a lot of evidence of the porcupine around these these particular trees. Here we have oleander bushes, highly toxic, not recommended for a garden where you can expect children to be, uh, but very pretty flowers and it's quite a hardy plant. Aposinaceae is the family name, the oleander family, and it's also the family of the desert rose, which also has pink flowers and has a very succulent, thick stem, um, which is trunk-like, and um, yeah, it's quite a quite a pretty plant. Um, related to the desert rose, which is of the genus Adenium, are many species of what we call an impala lily in southern Africa. So um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, group of plants. This is a beautiful hibiscus. I think it's hibiscus rose sinensis, but I may be wrong. Anyway, um, it's a very characteristic flower of the Malvaceae, which is the family of this plant. Um, you can see the very, very long um, uh, style um, with the stigmas at the top and then the anthers, which have for formed kind of a, a tube or androphore around the style. Um, and then you can see the little individual pollen uh, packets or capsules that make up um, 
the the anthers. Um, yeah, very very pretty, and you can see there are there are five stigmas. Then they're sticky and they're going to attract pollen. The pollen will pollen grains will land on them, and then they will start to grow a tube down the style which goes then to the ovary which will be located at the base of the flower here where the calyx is so these are the petals that's the calyx these petals make up the corolla and yeah very very interesting the base of the flower is called a pedicel and i would assume that these are called bracts i'm not absolutely certain there but anyway that's a very very pretty flower from the fam family malvasi so this is a nice find. We have a feather um, which is from an Indian roller. Uh, you can see it's kind of blue in color and it's been left by an Indian roller which is a very colorful bird which has blue and sort of purplish colors in it. But you can see what a lovely feather. Fantastic. This looks like a plant I've seen in North America called Campsus radicans um, and I'm not sure whether it is or not but it, it looks very very uh, familiar. So it's growing as a creeper on this tree and uh, you can see close up the leaves. Yeah, And I think it belongs to the family Bignoniaceae. I may be wrong though. Great, so I've completed my walk around the botanical gardens. Thank you for joining me. And if you like the content, please subscribe and like uh, the video. And I'll try to produce more content like this. And I'll work on the sound, of course. Thank you.